morning YouTube, just a bit of a Monday morning update for you guys, give you guys a bit of a look around the shop as it is and uh, how we've been doing. So we've been without Zach, our first year apprentice, all of last week, so the place is getting a little bit beyond where I'd personally like it to be. We did manage to Friday afternoon give the workshop a good clean out, but um, the paint room's really where I'd like to get one of the boys to spend a little bit of time just a few bits of paint being spilled on the floor I might even actually just peel this up and then we can have a clean surface underneath and it's easy just to clean the, the rest of it I did give that a bit of a tidy up anyway and I whacked that up there got the tinted stirring they say to only stir these once a day uh, they reckon you can actually over stir the water base I've got the paint for my next job mixed up, but when using this water base with the 2040, I left out I left that out when I mixed it up, which is uh, I guess it's basically like thinners in a way, but they say once it's in there, you've got a 24-hour window. So I have got it all mixed up. I've got to add my 167 grams of 2040 and then do me spray out. Um, this is what I'm doing first up this morning. I'll probably just uh, mask it all up and then mask that door off here and then wet on wet that section. I'll probably just paint straight over these little bits here. I just picked up them with some knifing putty, some fine filler and finish it off all fine with 800 grit. Finished all those edges with a piece of 1000 pad and Merca sponges I've got. So I'll probably give it a wipe down with some Prepsol first. Got some Prepsol in a squirter um, because they recommend that you Prepsol and uh, water clean your jobs. So I've been sort of following the book. Um, yeah, just following their guidelines. I ended up, uh, this sort of hasn't really been working, this spray out section here. And we got one of these from Phoenix, or actually. It's sort of a magnetic spray out card holder. So we can just do that and then whack it up there and now we've got a light up here we've got a different couple of different colors so that's another thing when you're doing water base you've got to use metal spray out cards if you use the the paper ones the water just sort of dissolves them and they go all funny um, this is another job I did it's uh, it's looking quite nice Got a little bit of uh, color difference just through the extra coat of clear there but it's just part and parcel of spray painting. I mean, I bought my colour. I think it probably blended between here and here type thing. So, you can even see there, it's a touch out, but it's held a nice gloss and it's quite clean. So we did the quarter panel all inside that door jam opening. These days, um, like back in the day, I used to try and sometimes if you got your door jam here, I'd try and do like a bit of a blow in, like a piss it out through there, but these days, I found, um, yeah, you're much better off if you just kind of find that edge there and just go right off that edge and sort of loop it around here somewhere rather than because you're painting your door, you're going to get overspray here and you're painting here, and you get out, you'll end up getting this sort of dry, funny edge there when, when you do your blend, it, blend out in your clear. Um, morning, Kelly. Uh, this one here is just a full front, basically. I've already painted the rad support on it. And we've got yeah, one new guard, one repair guard, new bonnet, new bumper bar. And the tow truck owner for this one here, he saw that car and he decided that he wanted the same colour on his tow truck because I think he said it got firebombed or something. So I ended up getting a colour card that was close to the black. We'll put a bit of matting agent in it and then next up we'll get it in and we'll do all the parts that were green are going to go that blue. I want to get one of the apprentices in there painting soon, just to sort of keep them keen, I guess. This is like a finer metallic, and they seem to lay down a lot nicer now. Something silly happened here is that <coughs> probably the uh, booth wasn't sucking as good as what I was hoping, so I painted this one first down this end of the booth, and then I painted another bumper bar down the other end of the booth, and I actually got bit of overspray landing on it must have just been clear overspray but that will just buff straight off literally run a buff over it and you won't see any of that sort of 
I was wondering what it was. I'm like, geez, it kind of looks like solvent foil, but I, I knew I didn't put it on heavy enough to sort of get solvent foil. I knew the water was um, dry before I uh, cleared it. So this is one I primed up Friday afternoon while Bol was doing a bit of cleaning. One of the apprentices here was doing a bit of cleaning up. Four coats on that, just three coats on that. This is what the bonnet's off, no blends. I think it's just, they didn't even think it might be like a cash job or something. They just want to keep it on the cheap. <coughs> There's a couple of jobs just getting stored over here. I think this one's crushed through the quarter panel there, yeah. May or may not get repaired in the end, who knows. So as far as guns and uh, air caps go, I was speaking to Carl and I'm like, man, you know, I'm having troubles blending and that. And he goes, oh, maybe try changing up your gun and settings a bit. Because um, everyone was telling me previously that the an SI water end tech was the way to go. It's what everyone wants to use for water base and, uh, you know, it's really good. So going by that, so that end tech was a HVLP. So I just thought, well, if I get a similar type setup on my Devilbers, well, it should sort of spray it similarly. Similarly, so I got the HV30 for that, and the blends weren't going too well. And uh, yeah, Carl just said, "Man, try the TA10, which is a cat that I've even told you guys I don't really usually rate previously, but I've been using it on this GTI Pro, the one I did get from Spray Guns Direct, and that one. This one's my base coat gun, 1.3 TE10." It's been taking the uh, Chromax Pro to the next level for me. So modeling, you'll get the issues with the sort of coarser silvers, finer silvers. If you follow the application methods I've shown you in other videos, it should be fine. Um, and yeah, it's been using that one for clear coat still. So T20 on that, Pro Light 1.3. Made sure I whacked my uh, gum and sticker up there this morning. Um, so the ANI, that's just sort of been a bit of a, uh, a helper gun. If I'm ever in there doing three colours, then I'll, I'll uh, grab that as well. Uh, that's that's been my um, wet on wet or direct gloss 2K gun. That's another helper gun, the GPI. Good gun that one. This one I've been even using uh, the T110 on that. That's sort of been um, retired to a bit of a base coat gun now. So for two and a half years you've been my clear gun, but you know there's uh, you got to move over, mate. You've got another a better looking one right next to us. So plastic primer gun, as you can see, 800 R straight in there in the Optima. Another one that Spray Guns Direct sent out. Uh, we've got a, we had a lucky winner on one of these and Spray Guns Direct decided to send me out a replacement. Um, that is my base coat blender in the 1.4 and an A&I F150, another A&I F150 from my mates at Spray Guns Direct with the 1.2 on it and that's got fade out thinner if you're wondering what that means. And then I've just got my couple of mini guns. I got that one. That one's got fade out thinner in it as well, just for sort of smaller spot repairs. Um, and that one's just sort of a touch up gun and handy for doing wheels and just single panels and stuff like that. So what I actually use this for is if I'm ever to, um, I'll, I'll be using it on this job in here. So I'll, just, I'll give you guys a bit of a look at it. With this um, water base, I've noticed if. I have mentioned it before that if I, um, so there's a bit of uh, bare steel here. If I go and paint water straight over that, water and metal equals rust, doesn't it? So uh, I'll put a little bit of wet on wet primer over that and I noticed that I'd get like a bit of a halo effect around the edge if I was to put the water base straight over there. So you just get the fade out thinner, puff that over the edge and it'll just melt that, uh, melt that primer in. So anyway, it's Monday morning and I'll better get stuck into this car so yeah i'll uh give you guys more updates as i go along thanks for watching coming out so that's me wet on wet primer down covered up all those bits of bare steel put a quick coat over the rear bumper and those couple of parts down there as well 
I actually ended up getting a little bit of overspray from the wet on wet primer over here. So I just got a thinnest rag wiped over that and then wiped it back over with the water-based cleaner so I didn't ruin the blend. Now what I'm gonna do is when I paint this, again, I'll put another piece of uh, paper up over there and peel it off when I'm ready to do the quarter panel and the blend. Hopefully I'll get coverage uh, first time, but I may need to end up putting an extra coat on it. Anyway, I'll give it another tack rag, just over the bits that, the, that there's no wet on wet primer. Where I've got full wet on wet primer, there's no real need to tack rag it. So that's all the base coat down. I ended up uh, running out of colour, so I made up 1150 mils the first time, and I was just able to do the body. So I did quarter panel, did these panels here, all these flares, and did the bonnet, and yeah, basically ran out of colour. So I had to go and mix up another 250 mils, so we're up to about, yeah, 1400 mils all up of the base coat colour. I've got a good feeling about this one, I reckon it's going to dry down nice because uh, last time uh, when I was having a bit of troubles with the mottling and that, Carl came back in and, and another one, Wade from Axalta came in and had a, gave us a bit more training and they're just like basically the main thing that I was probably going a little bit too fast on that control coat, um, yeah I was, I was holding it back but I was probably not overlapping enough so you just really, you're painting like that, you, just moving forwards in very slow increments each pass and it seems to be laying down a bit nicer. So the colour was matched originally so all I did uh, I mixed up the colour another 250 for the bumper bar and um, I put a little bit because I knew it was a it needed to go a bit redder and more violet so I put a touch of that into the colour and I just actually blended that colour into the quarters so there shouldn't be any colour difference there. Like the colour was pretty good off the machine, it wasn't too bad, but um, just with a light metallic, you sort of really want that colour to be as close as possible before you even blend it. But it seems to have blended out quite nice. I'll grab that blower and start just carefully drying it down. They reckon you don't want to jump straight onto it with the blower. Uh, you can sort of create problems. So that's probably about re ready for a blower now. Get the blower on, like you want to just, just let it start to flash off a little bit and then start blowing it. You might have noticed when I was doing this bonnet that um, I did, I started from that side. So I did my wet coat and then straight away followed that by the control coat and then came over and did this side, wet coat, control coat, rather than going over the whole bonnet and then coming back to do your control coat because it's quite a big bonnet. Um, sort of, yeah, you don't really want that first coat drying. Looks like I had a little bit of crap land on there, but that'll tack rag off. It's no biggie. And even with this door here, you probably notice that like, I didn't even put that uh, wet bed on the base coat blender down over the entire door. I just put it over where I needed it. So I will give that a tack rag. I'd imagine there'd be some, yeah, I can even feel that just with my hand. There's some sort of dusty overspray over there, so I will tack rag over those sections. The bar's not going to need it. Um, I'll, I'll do the same thing over this quarter panel here and there. Um, the bonnet won't need it. Sometimes you can actually just end up creating more, more crap in your paintwork if you do that. Like if I was to go and tack rag that, um, if it wasn't a brand new tack rag, you could just end up yeah, dragging more crap into it, doing more harm than good. I decided to include a little bit of clear coat stage on this Land Rover. So I'm using the DeVilbus GTI Pro Lite 1.3mm fluid tip on it and their TE20 air cap running it at 2 bar. If you guys do hang around for a couple more minutes you'll get to see firsthand a bit of frustration in the workshop. I, I think that most painters would understand that feeling when a panel job just isn't right. I thought I'd give you guys a bit of a look at how this ANI R150 sprays again. I've got quite a few people onto this gun and it is a pretty amazing gun. I've got the F150 as well that you guys saw earlier in the video. Again, they're probably one of the best spray guns in their price range. So you get these for around uh, 75 
British pounds. So that, that equates to about 150 Australian dollars. So probably even better if that's in the US. You probably get one uh, for around 120 or so dollars US. Uh, so quite a good gun for the price. And as you can see here, a perfect part to be painting with it because you've got that tricky spot that the paint just sort of wants to build up in mainly on the, that internal angle that you see where the bumper bar goes on a 90 degree angle. So that's it, Clico done. As always, the GTI Pro Light 1.3 TE20 air cap on it for the win. It went quite nice, fairly clean. Had a few chunks of crap. I reckon they must have landed in it, landed in the bonnet from when I was painting up here. But that, that bonnet was actually yeah, quite clean when I finished painting it. Oh well, they'll polish out. They'll come out in the wash. There's loads of stone chips all over that and considering I didn't prime it, I've actually done quite well to get rid of 98% of them anyway. You can very slightly see one there just in the metallic. I think that's what it is, just a slight stone chip or something. Repair looks nice. Repair through there. All those parts come up okay too. That blended out alright. I'm pretty happy with that. Can't see any real halos around it or anything. I ended up using the minigun for the rear bumper because I've done these before and you go a bit too heavy in there and next thing you know it just starts running down there and yeah, you're going to have a bad time. That's why I use the ANI, this is the one spray guns direct sent out. 1.2 mil fluid tip on it. HPS is what they call the air cap. Anyway, I'll leave it at that, coming out. Oh well, that was a big day. It's about 20 past six in the afternoon and I started at about 20 past six in the morning. So we just finished doing these prime ups. I'll show you guys one thing that really, really pisses me off. You'll probably still be able to see it. But when panel beaters sand back bumper bars with 80 grit sandpaper, there is no need for it. All down here, look at that. I would never touch a bumper bar with anything coarser than 180 grit. Or maybe on a very rare occasion, if I had a lot of filler in there and I really needed to block it out and 180 wasn't just wasn't doing it. Like they had here, they had stone chips, two stone chips. How do they fix it? Derp, I'm a panel beater. I got some 80 grit. And I'm gonna sand into your stone chip and not even get rid of the stone chip. So it's still there. You've actually created lots of work for me. Sorry about that, but it's something that really pisses me off because it, it takes time for me. It, it uses up materials. And yeah, I mean, at the time of the day when you just wanna go home, you really don't wanna be sanding out these scratches. It, yeah, you can never really uh, completely removed. So my apprentice, he got that one and that one done. And after I painted this tow truck, I came out and got the parts sorted up and then uh, I just let him go home and I ended up finishing off uh, the primary for him. He got the first two coats on the body of the cars. So we'll get the lights on in the booth. I'll give you a quick look at these tow trucks. I did, painted three jobs today. Uh, did a Land Rover first up. Did a little uh, Toyota Orion type Camry type thing, that was just a guard and a bumper bus, that was fairly simple. I actually got my apprentice bowl to come in and I got him to put the first coat of uh, white on, so just sort of try to keep them enthusiastic and keen about the trade, you know. That's actually just autothane. Just some autothane HS clear that we had sitting there. I just thought, you know what, why bother using up the good quality, expensive clear on a job like this? But I used the um, ANI F150 1.3 and it totally killed it, man. I was loving it. The size of the fan was massive, mega sized fan. And that's the dash off the same car. So this thing, yeah, I started to put the wet on wet primer on and I didn't say it until I put the wow on and there was all these pinholes. So I was just burying it, burying it and slowly started to run a little bit but that'll actually probably most of that'll polish out oh that'll redo it no biggie so you can see there that's that's the color scheme he wanted 
Should look pretty cool when it's back on his uh, on the back of his tow truck. Yeah, I'm loving this masking machine. It's awesome. It's so, like when I'm, you know, you can see it's positioned perfectly. So I just leave it here. When I want to do some masking on a car, just wheel it straight into the booth, and off I go. That's the one I got from Spray Guns Direct, the Colade masking machine. They're gonna actually send out the this size paper as well because we don't have it here in Perth. I mean, uh, they said that they used to have it at the paint supply where I get my stuff off. But he said sort of got to the point no one was really buying it. So um, yeah, that'll look pretty cool when it's done. Uh, but I switch that compressor off. I'll drain that before I go home. Um, so yeah, I've got Bowl, my apprentice, in here and gave the floor a big, uh, just a quick clean up. I said, man, look, you know, we're a man down, we're an apprentice down at the moment, so just 20 minutes, it's one of those things you, you let it go and then you just get uh, yeah, get to the point where you just forget about it and I just want to, you know, uh, stay on uh, getting some good habits. I bought this myself, actually. I paid 25 bucks for that because I've had enough of writing uh, things that I need down on the spray out cards and then forgetting about them, so. We've got main, two main suppliers, Park Autos and Phoenixer. So I just write what I need down there and they can come in and yeah, any other stuff can just go over there. Um, yeah, so my spray out uh, bench didn't really seem to work. I, um, I thought I'd put some cardboard here because I tried doing a spray out here once and it just got over spray all over the place. And it turns out that fan's just piss weak and it doesn't really do enough. It ends up, most of the paint ends up back in your face. So. Um, we'll either be doing them in the booth or just down here where the, they've been done previously but you can see there that it's sort of not going to be too long until it's, you're not going to get much suction out of there because they're just going to totally ruin it, ruin those grates. So, I treat this shop like my own, it's not my own but I, I treat it if not better than my own in a way because I uh, respect what's been spent on this place and I if it was mine, I would hate to see it in the state that it was sort of getting to. But yeah, do my best to get it up and going. So anyway, I'll bring those couple of cars in, switch the booth back off, drain the compressor, and I'm out of here. I've got to go home, have some dinner. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Coming out.